a warm welcome. Apologies, I'm getting ahead of myself. A very warm welcome to Acorn Christian Live. Uh, my name's Lisa, and we're also joined here by Wes, if you've not met either of us before. Um, however you are using this resource from us today, we hope that it serves you and it uh, is a blessing in your time of ministry together. So whether you're a healing hub or you're just on your own um, seeking healing from the Father, then we hope that this serves you really well. Um, let's just move straight into a time of worship and then we're going to uh, share some short notices. such a lovely uh, healing psalm there and if you do enjoy that we've got plenty of those on our website that you can use uh, along with your hub or on your own as well um, but let's um, let's go into the scripture for today it's, it's lovely to start by sharing the word together um, today we're going to be looking at the woman at Simon's house and finding God's wonderful compassion um, and you can head over to uh, our Coffee Pods podcast to listen to this a little bit further where Wes and I uh, pull apart the text a little bit more but let's uh, read together let's just minimize myself so I can see oh sorry I've done it backwards let's uh let's go differently <laughs> um do check out our free resources 
do check out everything that's coming in the new year. We've got lots of different academies, as you can see on the screen there, the Healing Academy, the Listening Academy and the Training Academy. So if you're interested in what we mean by the Acorn Academy, all the information is on our website. And we'd love to see you in the new year. So let's pray and then we will come into our reading. We have had so many prayer requests this last week. Um, and so we're just so uh, grateful to have this opportunity with you to bring these people before the Lord. Heavenly Father, please help us to pray in this moment. I ask for your guidance, Holy Spirit. And I bring each of these people to you. And I ask for your healing touch on each of their lives, Lord. I bring you Alan and his wife. Andrew. Tony. And Ian. Pam and Bill. Anthony, Susan, Oriana, and Claire, Sarah, Mike, Woody, and Sarah, Robina. Bernie and Maureen, Susan, Emily, Dee, Joanna, Jane, Diana and Melissa. I'm just going to give you this moment as well to bring anybody before the Lord. And if you are with a hub, feel free to pause here and just pray together. Lord, please hear our cry today. Please hear our cry for your help. We lean on you, Jesus. I ask that you will bring, Holy Spirit, um, a sign and a word of your presence in these people's lives today. Please bring healing today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wonderful. So if I've got my schedule correct, we should be going into the reading. <laughs> let's see. Yes. Wonderful. So let's read together uh, from Luke. It's quite a familiar story for a lot of us, but um, I'm really excited for what Wes is going to pull out of it today and share. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will, he, will love him more? 
Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You've judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Wes. Thank you, Lisa. And again, my welcome to you all at this short service of uh, healing and prayer, depending on however you uh, use this. You are incredibly welcome with us. I love this story, as I've said about many of the Bible stories, but this one is a particular thing. There's so much in it that, in a sense, um, it would take two or three healing services to try and just put it all together for you. But let me just take out a, a couple of things. You're wondering first, how did the woman get in there? Well, the idea is that uh, in uh, this uh, time in uh, Palestine, um, this meal would have been held in an open courtyard. It was like television. It was the way that the um, Kardashians of the day displayed their wealth. If you were wealthy, you had a banquet and uh, the people of the village would come and stand around the courtyard, A, to see if they could pick up any juicy bits of gossip, but also to see if there was any sort of food left over that they could possibly uh, you know, sneak away. And so it would be set up in the courtyard. The rich would lounge uh, with their feet pointing outwards from a table. They'd lean on their left uh, elbow and they would eat the food by just taking things uh, from uh, the table rather than like us sitting down at chairs, which they didn't actually have like that. So everybody came to watch. Um, bear in mind then that they would have seen what happened right at the start. And it is clear from the text that this woman sees what happens from the start. Um, I don't know whether you've ever been to a church service and disagreed with the preacher and then talked about it over the Sunday lunch. But that's the sort of thing that's going to be uh, done here. Uh, the Pharisee uh, was, in a sense, culturally obliged, but also there's a little bit of something else in it to invite a visiting rabbi to a meal. Uh, it's very clear in his phrase, if this man were a prophet, actually the earlier texts have the phrase, if this man were the prophet, then he would know. And so it's clear that uh, it's been uh, arranged that Jesus would come and they intend to pull him apart because of what he's been doing, what he said. How do you know that? Well, just take what happens right at the beginning. Uh, Jesus comes in and from the conversation he will have with Simon. Now, bear in mind, Simon's a Pharisee. He is obsessed with cleanness, with cultural purity in terms of not just spirit, but also body as well. And therefore, to have anything unclean at the table was unthinkable. So in the conversation Jesus has with him, it says, actually, when I came, Simon, you did not greet me with a kiss. You did not offer me any water to wash, wash my feet. And feet were considered unclean in uh, first century Palestine. And, uh, you know, they don't get sort of manicured and pedicured and things as they do now, but they were considered unclean. And therefore, not to be um, given uh, water to wash your feet said something, as did the lack of the perfume and fragrance that you would offer to your honoured guests. In fact, the more you did it, the more you sought to honour them. The kiss is interesting because it was required that, beginning with the most senior member of the house, all the male members of the house would stand at the door and kiss the hand of a visiting rabbi. 
So Jesus doesn't get any of this. And basically what it's saying is, uh, I don't regard you as worth anything. But he's invited Jesus to the meal, which probably indicates a slightly less than honest agenda for Simon. So let me go back. The woman. You know how she got there because everybody else was there and everybody else was watching. She sees clearly what has not been done as a sign of respect and honor to Jesus. It is clear that from her conduct that a number of things have happened. She's come with perfume. It, it's generally regarded that that's what she intended to do. But there then comes this element of, of the feet and her tears and her hair. The, the scripture will tell us that uh, she's known as a, a woman of, uh, you know, uh, loose uh, morals. But it's very clear in something that we're not told in the story, that whether she has had an encounter with Jesus in conversation or she has heard him speaking, she has been touched by the grace and forgiveness of God for the life that she has lived. We're not told when it happened, but Jesus clearly indicates that that's what has taken place in his conversation with Simon. So just take a look very quickly at what takes place here. She will not approach Jesus uh, from the, the front because he's obviously leaning uh, on the table, but she won't ap approach his face because of um, perhaps the shame that she's felt over the life that she has lived. So instead of approaching Jesus face to face, even before he gets to the table, she will approach him from behind towards his feet. It's the only place in a sense, I guess, that she felt comfortable. It's really interesting then that the tears and the overwhelming sorrow, but also gratitude that this woman feels is expressed through her body physically as she weeps. And she sobs enough for the tears to fall onto the feet of Jesus where she is kneeling. Now, uh, what would have happened is Simon would have um, given Jesus uh, water to wash his feet and a servant to do that uh, for him. And then he would have been given a towel in order to dry his feet before being offered perfume. But the woman has never intended to wash Jesus' feet because she has no towel. She has not come prepared. So she uses the only thing that she has available and she lets down her hair. Now, um, just for uh, those uh, cultural uh, moments, um, that's regarded as being very, very bad. In fact, a woman uh, would only ever let down her hair in the presence of her husband. It was uh, a sign and precursor to uh, intimacy. So for her to do this, uh, you know, adds to the shock. And, and you need to understand the ripple that goes around the courtyard for two reasons. One, that she's a woman. One, that she's known to be immoral. And now she's here. And you can imagine the Pharisees and Simon particularly not knowing what to do with this. But for the crowds watching, this is good television. Absolutely. And so in a sense, what takes place is an act of incredible love and incredible gratitude. As she weeps over Jesus' feet and then wipes the tears from his feet with her hair. And she will not anoint his head because the head is sacred and it would have been dishonorable to do that. So she anoints his feet. How beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news, O Zion. And then Simon steps in, and this is where, for him, it all goes wrong. I mean, the feast has gone. I mean, he hoped to shred Jesus with his theological um, knowledge and, and to humiliate this, this radical rabbi. But instead now he is stunned and shocked because of the woman, but also now because of the question, if 
he were the prophet, he would know what sort of woman this is. Of course, the truth is, because he is the prophet, he does know what sort of woman this is. And the encounter that she has had either directly or indirectly with Jesus has transformed her life because her shame and her guilt have been dealt with. It's funny, isn't it, uh, that shame and guilt are the first two things that appear in Genesis chapter three. As God comes to find Adam and Eve and they say, uh, I hid because I was afraid and I was ashamed. And this sense of guilt and shame are the two things that humanity first experiences as we separate from God. And, you know, shame and guilt can not only be about the things that we have done, but it can also be about the things done to us. And this woman goes into a wonderful act of love and of gratitude because of what has happened for her inwardly as the encounter with Jesus, as I say, however it happened, has dealt for her with her forgiveness and in that sense, her guilt and her shame have gone. It's true for you and it's true for me today that we get our guilt and our shame, our debts, as the story of the, the, the Jesus tells uh, of the two debtors. It's the same word, our sins, as they are dealt with as we come to Christ. And so today, what does that mean for you? Well, it means very simply that Jesus is very present with you right now. And so as you hear this story, my question to you today is, where are you in that story? As we bring our guilt and our shame and we find grace and shalom, healing, where are you? And I wonder where I would, was standing in this story. I'm hoping I'm not Simon the Pharisee. I just really would not like to be that. Would I have been shocked? I guess culturally I might have been. I would have liked to think that I would have been close enough to Jesus to see what was in his eyes. But talk to God about that. The second one is this. What parts of your story keep replaying in your soul? Because that's what guilt and shame is, isn't it? We keep replaying a part of our story that we cannot move away from. It keeps coming again and again. It's uh, the, one of the psalm uh, hymn writers talks about he breaks the power of cancelled sin. So how does that work for us? Well, I would suggest today that you can come close to Jesus. In fact, he's expecting it. I think just Jesus sat down and lounged at his side as he knew this woman was present. You know, he's expecting you to come. He's not hoping you won't. He's wishing you will. That you are invited to come and be close to Jesus and bring this to him so that he can take it away with himself and leave you with grace and shalom. I love the fact that the next one is, is true, isn't it? That Jesus always brings change and freedom. Just think about all the people that we've talked about over this series that have come to Jesus. What do they get? Well, they don't get guilt, shame, and condemnation. They get grace, shalom, change, and freedom. And friends, that's yours today. We're going to ask for that today. Because yes, guilt and shame do sometimes express themselves in our bodies physically, as well as our minds, emotions, and our spirits. And the last one, I think it's absolutely beautiful, is that Jesus always covers our shame with his love. There's one bit of the story that we're going to cover in Coffee Pods, um, but there's a little phrase in the text that you have to just watch out for. And it, it, it's got that wonderful um, uh, moment in it uh, when it says that Jesus turned 
to the woman and spoke to Simon. There's some culture in that which I'll bring, but just think about it. This woman has avoided the gaze of Jesus, and now he turns to engage her. I mean, a Pharisee would not talk to a woman. This is like no way. And actually, Jesus doesn't talk to Simon, who's over here. He looks into the face of the woman who is there, and he makes such an incredible announcement of love. That final phrase, isn't it absolutely beautiful? One we know a lot. Your faith in me has saved you. Go in peace. So today, whether you're dealing with guilt and shame, whether you have a history that's replaying, let's bring it now to God. Father, in the wonderful, wonderful name of Jesus, I simply invite you as we come and even to stand behind you at your feet, not sure whether you want us anywhere near you. Lord Jesus, thank you that you're expecting us to come, that we might find healing for the inside life that we have. Lord, that these videos in our heart and mind will stop playing over and over, and that we will have memory without pain, because, Lord, you extend your love and grace to cover us. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I announce your healing and your forgiveness over each of us today, that we might know the face of Jesus turned towards us, and he would say to us, go, your faith in me has brought salvation and change and freedom. Now live body, mind, and spirit in my peace. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you so much, Wes, for this encouragement. And we're now going to leave you uh, either with your Healing Hub hosts or just uh, wherever you are, whoever you're with, um, and move into a time of worship. But we look forward to catching you very soon.
Jesus 